Hey there, I'm Amy from thecrazycraftlady.com. Welcome back to week 18 in my 25 Crafts to Christmas countdown. I'm here with half a voice because not only are we in full swing of Christmas crafting season, I'm also in full swing of my children are little petri dishes who bring home all sorts of fun germs from school to share with their mother. So bear with me, we're still gonna craft. It's just gonna be at a lower decibel volume than normal, but I'm really excited because I'm going back and crafting with one of my Dollar Tree staple favorite craft supplies, and that is the faux tin wall tile. I've done some pumpkin crafts with this. I did, um, Christmas tree um, tin can tree skirt holder, which is right here that I made out of these wall tiles. They're super fun, super versatile to play around with. And this week we're gonna go back to basics and just make some super cute um, Christmas ornaments that look like they're made out of uh, tin wall tiles. Let's get making. All right, so I started by just printing out some outlines of a couple of holiday shapes. I will link to this free printable PDF if you wanna um, download your own and print it off. Otherwise, use whatever shapes you like or a stencil. And then I just cut these out really quick. Didn't have to be perfect, but just cut them out so that you have something to trace. And then I started with my faux tin tile. And these are kind of weird because it has this adhesive backing sheet, but it's only attached to the tile around the four edges, so only around the perimeter, which makes cutting these kind of tricky. So I have just started completely removing that adhesive backing. You have to cut it at a corner and then rip the whole thing off. And then you can trace on the back of it. It is kind of a bumpy surface, so it's a little tricky, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Just do your best. I find it easiest to use just like a Sharpie marker and kind of sketch around your shape. And then once you've traced out as many designs as you like, go ahead and cut them out with a pair of scissors. I will say it's best to cut right on the inside of that Sharpie line um, because I ended up painting the front and back of this faux tin tile. And sometimes it's hard to get paint to cover up Sharpie marker because it'll bleed through. But just go ahead and cut out all of those shapes. And then I got painting, so I used just a, like a flat one inch brush and some deco art white chalk paint. Just kind of like brush it across the ornament and then kind of pounce or stipple up and down. That way you don't get brush strokes, you get more of like a pounced effect. And it looks more weathered in the end. So paint all of your ornaments white and then set it aside to dry. Then I came back with another flat paintbrush and some acrylic craft paint. This is deco art. It was just like black and like a tan color. You could use like a light brown, mix in white, whatever you want. But I just kind of put a little bit of both paint colors on a brush. Then I brushed it off on a paper towel so I had a very, very dry brush. And then I just kind of brushed back and forth the distressed. So the nice thing about these tiles is that they have the little raised parts and so those, those stick up. So those will get like more of your distressed effect and more of the paint. But you can add as much or as little paint as you like until you like get the desired uh, look that you're going for. And like I said, I did paint both the front and the back of these ornaments, but I didn't film it because I didn't want to bore you all to death. But it's nice to have finished like front and back of your project, even if no one will ever see them. You know it's there. Go ahead and hole punch your ornaments at the top, either in the center or off to the side. And 
Okay, so all my paint is dried and then it's time to decorate. So you can do really whatever you want here. I did kind of two different things. One, I'll show you on the stocking here. I pulled out some green kind of burlap ribbon that I got this fall back at Dollar Tree. And I wanted it to cover the top little trim part of the stocking, but I knew it was too thick, so I kind of folded it up. So it wasn't exactly in half, but that way it had like more visual interest. And then I hot glued it. Hot glue the ribbon in place on the front and then flip the ornament over and then hot glue it in the back as well. Be careful that you're not covering that hole punch. And what you'll want to do is punch through again that ribbon on the front side of the ornament. I don't know if I necessarily recommend using a hole puncher. I think I probably broke my hole punch on this project, but it ended up working out. You could also use like a razor blade in it, like a cutting mat. You just need to be able to feed a piece of twine through that hole so you can hang up your ornament. But then I kind of eyeballed where the hole needed to be on the back side of that ribbon. And I punched another hole and then finished hot gluing that piece of ribbon in place. So you have a little green trim on the top of your stocking and then string a piece of twine through and tie it with a knot so you have a hanger. Next up, I took another piece of twine and I tied it in a knot onto the twine loop that was the hanger of the ornament. And on this, I was gonna put um, a little jingle bell on each end. So this twine tends to fray a bit, so I find it easiest to take a tiny bit of masking tape and put it on the end of the twine so it's easier to feed through the little top of the jingle bell. Especially these jingle bells, they're so small. And so you just tie one onto each end of the twine. And it's nice to maybe hang them at two different lengths so they're not exactly even with each other. And then I added some skinny black and white check ribbon. I hot glued it all the way around the top of the stocking. So I add like another layer at the top over that green ribbon and secured it in the back. And then I also made a bow. So by popular demand after one of my last videos, a few of you asked me to show my, my bow making in slow-mo, so here it is. So I start with a length of ribbon that I hold up flat, and then I make two little loops over my pointer fingers, so I have two bow ends. And then you take those bow ends and you tie them in a simple knot. Now watch the tail end on the left-hand side. As I make that knot and I pull that bow end through, that tail is going to flip over to the other side. And that's how I get my two tail ends to hang nicely. And then you tighten your bow and you kind of finagle, you push and pull, push and pull, until you get your bow loops and your tails just where you want them. And then you can finish it off by cutting the little tail ends at a 45 degree angle so everything looks nice. From there you can just hot glue the bow in place onto the stocking. So I did the exact same thing on the two mittens. Uh, the only difference is when I pulled that ribbon onto the back, I kind of pulled it at an, from both angles. So I pulled the bottom at one angle and I pulled the top down at the other angle just because the top of the ribbon was a little bit more ridged and curved. But then as far as decorating the uh, mitten, it was exactly the same. And then I did my little star a little bit differently, make a little twine hanger, run twine through the, the hole punched hole and tie it with a knot, and then make a bow with that same green ribbon. So what I did is I cut a pretty short length, fold it in half and cut it at a 45 degree angle. And that's what makes those fancy little ribbon ends. So when you bunch it together, it makes a cute tiny little bow. But I wanted to add another layer to it, so I cut three very short lengths of the black and white check ribbon 
cut at a 45 degree angle. And this is, I normally make this version of a bow on a much larger scale, so with like six or seven pieces of ribbon, but because it was so small, I went with less ribbon, and then I bunched up the green piece first, and then added the three black and white pieces on top. It was a little tricky, and it involved some finagling just because it was so small, but you could use any type of ribbon or bow that you like. And then secure it in the center with another piece of ribbon, and tie it with a tight double knot to hold everything together. From there you can, you know, kind of fluff out the bow however much or little that you want. And then just hot glue it in place right at the top of the star ornament. But there you have it, my four finished little Christmas tin tile ornaments. Like I said, I'm starting to get pretty obsessed with these Dollar Tree faux tin tiles. I may have to go online and order like a box of them so I have more to craft with. I do hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, happy making!